And good morning, everyone. How are we all doing this morning? All right. I like to hear that. So wh why aren't any of you golfing or grocery shopping or at a brunch? Because it's Shabbat? Whoa. So you mean you want to come hang out with the Lord instead of doing whatever you want? Wow. You guys are weird. Man, me too. But yes, welcome. Uh, if you're new here or new tuning in online, this is uh, Mishkan David, which is just Hebrew for Tabernacle of David. And uh, not only is it the Shabbat this morning, but we are here gathered in the name above every name. The reason why a lot of special things happen in this place is not necessarily because any of the people in this room, myself included, why? Because of what the Lord promises. Everything that he says, he does. And of course, the reason why this place is special is because of what happens. In Amos chapter 9 and verse 11, it says that the tabernacle of David would be raised up again in the last days, that the breaches thereof would be closed, and that the old ways would be restored. Now, what are the old ways? His ways. And uh, how do we define his ways? Well, by the way our Messiah defined them, because he was the perfect one, the Prince of Peace, the King of Righteousness. His ways were the right ways. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And so we lift up Messiah Yeshua in Hebrew, which just means uh, salvation or our salvation. Of course, the world knows him as Jesus the Christ, but we like to call him the name his mama gave him, which was Yeshua. She was a nice young Jewish lady named Miriam. She didn't become Mary until a long, long time after, but that's okay. So, because we lift him up in this place, he does amazing things, because his word said, like we mention it every single week, because it is worth mentioning, in Matthew chapter 18 and verse 20, where two or three are gathered in his name, not my name, not Rabbi Gabe's name, not any of our names here, in his name, his promise would be that he is here in the midst of us right now. So we know that the Lord is going to continuously keep his word, keep his promises, touch us, heal us, restore us, show us amazing things, especially as the last days get closer. Because he said, do not forsake the gathering of the brethren, especially as the day gets closer. So as the world goes and divides itself and isolates itself, we're supposed to come together even more and, and cherish that time even more. So I would ask that you please rise. Our brother Yvonne is going to blow the shofar for us. A bunch of amazing reasons as to why we blow the shofar. But perhaps the most significant is that it is the sign of the return of our Messiah. It says that the last trump would be when he sets his foot on the mouth of olives. And then, of course, our dear Rebbitson is going to take us through praise and worship to facilitate for us as individuals together to enter into the presence of the Lord. And we're going to recite the Shema together. We do that Friday. We do that Saturday. We talk about the Shema during the message. We talk about the Shema after the message. Why? Because it's the most important thing as a child of God, son or daughter, that you need to learn how to do is to love him with all of your heart, mind, soul, and strength. If you start doing that, everything else will fall into place. So we love you all, and Shabbat Shalom. Blessed are thee, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has granted us his commandments and commands us to hear the sound of the shofar. Lord, let the sound of your voice and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to thee, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. May we make harmony in the heavenly realms. May we make peace for us, for Israel, for all, and for all your people everywhere. Amen.
Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, all of your mind, all of your soul. This is the first and great commandment, and the second one is like unto it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments hang all the Torah and the prophets. of the universe who separates the holy from the profane. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who commands us, who gives us a Shabbat of rest one day out of seven and commands us to rest, to rest our bodies, our minds, our souls, but not just to rest in isolation, but to rest in your presence, in fellowship with you and one another. What a privilege. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe and keeper of promises, Promises that you've made to our forefathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Promises you've made to the children of Israel. Promise, a promise that you made a long time ago at the beginning of time in the Garden of Eden, gone and then. The promise that you would send a Messiah, a deliverer, a Mashiach, a savior, to save fallen humanity, to save us from our sin, to save us from ourselves. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, and you did just that. You sent Messiah Yeshua who came to earth and walked the fullness of the Torah, taught us as any great rabbi would, as the greatest teacher of all. The word of God made flesh, the Torah made flesh, dwelt among us, and he taught by his own life and his own example and his own teachings. He began to teach us and to show us how to keep your commandments, how to walk in righteousness, and to show us and demonstrate that to keep your commandments is not burdensome and it indeed is not grievous, but that your yoke is easy and truly your burden is light. And to show us that salvation is only the first step. It's a free gift, but that favor from you and blessings from you are predicated on obedience. But thank God, thank you, Lord, because of the Holy Spirit, each and every one of us now has the power to be obedient sons and daughters. And that we now have the power to say no to sin, that we can just turn our free will and turn away from sin and toward you and towards righteousness. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, because Messiah Yeshua taught us that true righteousness begins in the heart first. And that if you cleanse the inside of the cup first, that the outside would be clean as well. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, because you will send the Messiah again very soon. 
and he will set his feet on the Mount of Olives, and he will take his rightful place on the throne of David in Jerusalem as king and high priest, and he will establish the Lord our God, your kingdom here on earth as it is in heaven, and at long last bring about true peace on earth and goodwill to all men. As we enter into your courts with thanksgiving and with praise, Lord, we remember the words of the psalmist who said, I will declare your name unto my brethren. In the midst of the congregation will I praise you. You that fear the Lord, praise him. All you the seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him. All ye seed of Israel, we Lord, we enter into your courts with thanksgiving and with praise. Come into his presence with thanksgiving in your heart and give him praise as we come together at Mishkan David Messianic Congregation to worship our God and King this morning. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous. Are you ready to rejoice? For praise is comely for the upright. That's right. Praise the Lord with the heart. Sing unto him with the psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. The operative word is skillfully. <laughs> we praise you. We thank you. Hallelujah. Adonai. We praise you. Come and worship and praise the Lord with me. Are you ready for this? I am.
That was really good. I could have kept going. The psalmist said, Psalm 91, one of my favorites. He said, because you have made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, your habitation, there shall no evil befall you, neither shall any plague come nigh to your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest you dash thy foot against a stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the adder. The young lion and the dragon shall you trample under feet. Because he has set his love upon me, therefore I will deliver him. I will set him on high, because he has known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble, and I will deliver him and honor him. With long life I will satisfy him and show him my salvation, my Yeshua. Beautiful. Let's sing that again together. 
For thus saith the high and lofty one that inhabits eternity, whose name is holy. I dwell in the high and holy place with him also that is of a contrite and humble spirit, to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones.
Moreover, brethren, I would not that you should be ignorant how that all our fathers were under the cloud and all passed through the sea and all were baptized unto Moses in the cloud and in the sea and did all eat the same spiritual meat and did all drink the same spiritual drink for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them and that rock was the Messiah. But with many of them God was not well pleased for they were overthrown in the wilderness. Now these things were our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Now all these things happen to them for examples and they are written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the world are come. Wherefore let him that thinks he stands take heed lest he fall. There has no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that which you are able, but will, with the temptation, also make a way to escape, that you may be able to bear it. God will always make a way.
to praise the Lord. Very good. Thank you, honey. Thank you, dancers. Pink ladies, you look beautiful. Anyone happy to be in the house of the Lord besides me? The joy of the Lord is our strength. As King David said, in his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand are pleasures forevermore. Rav Shaul, known as Paul in the Bible, said it is a peace that surpasses all understanding. And of course, Yeshua said, where two or three are gathered in his name, he said, my name, his name, not my name, his name. He said, there am I in the midst of them. Are we gathered in his name? Can we say his name that his mom called him? Yeshua. Thank you. We are gathered in his name, which means that he promised to be here. He is here. Does anyone bear witness that he is here? It's not because I said so, it's because he said so. So he's here, so if you don't have a close encounter with the Lord, it's not because he's not here, it's because you're not here. Somebody said, I want to be here. And if we draw close to him, what does the Bible say? He will draw close to us. It's amazing, he's as close as our breath and sometimes we think he's far away. He's never far. He's always right under our nose. We're the ones that get away from him. He doesn't get away from us. And so that's why the Bible says he rewards those that diligently seek him. Got a couple of announcements today. Tomorrow is Earthly Father's Day. Praise God for dads, right? <laughs> Happy Father's Day if you're a father. And to honor our Heavenly Father, we're going to have a mikvah or baptism service tomorrow at my, Esther and I and myself's house in Miramar, West Miramar. We live there. I knew the day that the Lord gave us that house with a pool. I said, ah, baptism. Thank you, Lord. And so uh, we've had a few um, victims, I mean volunteers, who have, who have said they want to be baptized, or you would like to rededicate. Maybe you got a little lukewarm with the Lord and you got a little uh, chilled with Him. You want to rededicate your life to the Lord. You're welcome to do so. Uh, please let me know. We'll give you instructions. It's going to be at 2 p.m. tomorrow at our home. And please bring your own towel so Esther doesn't have to do laundry. And... Uh, And bring a change of clothing because we're going to have fellowship afterwards. We're going to have food, of course, as always. And, uh, and so, and so uh, please pray for the weather. The, the weather report says 70% chance of rain tomorrow. So we're going to pray for no rain tomorrow. Amen. So again, let me know and I'll give you instructions on, on how to get to our home. Let me know. And, uh, and uh, like I said, if you've never been fully immersed in water, here's your opportunity to do so. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, just like Yeshua said, we're going to do what He says. And so, praise God. Uh, looking forward to that tomorrow. Um, I do, um, I want to say, Mauricio, Tabernacle uh, de David in Espanol on Thursday night at 8 p.m. He said a couple of people gave their hearts to the Lord this last program from Latino America. He said they were Catholic. It's okay. They went from Mary to Jesus. It's all right. Amen. Right to the source. Amen. Praise God. So Thursday nights, Mauricio, Tabernacle de David, all you do is uh, get his, his telephone number. He'll text you the coordinates for the Zoom meeting, 8 to 9.30 p.m. every Thursday night. Um, we've got a couple of uh, causes that the Lord's put on our heart to support. Uh, the Golani Brigade in Israel, which is, of course, Israeli defense forces are there right on the border with, uh, with Syria and Lebanon. 
And so we support their families. We've been raising money. There is a donate button on our webpage, uh, mishkondavid.org. And, uh, and you can look through, through there on Facebook. All the previous services are there recorded and uploaded on Facebook. And some we have on, uh, on um, YouTube. And so if you'd like to go back and see a service or you missed a service, like last night's service was super, was, was excellent last night's service. The word last night that the Lord put on my heart was amazing. And so if you missed it, you know, look it up on Facebook again and, 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 and view the service if you've missed any of the services. Uh, we have a intercessory prayer group that uh, we have a, a chat room on WhatsApp. It's about 20 people or 18 people. 18 prayer warriors that will pray with you and for you. If you're watching on the internet, send me an email, send me a text message, any prayer request. We'll be happy to pray with you and for you. And also, we have a prayer team in the front here who want to anoint you with oil. Our elder Roger today is a little under the weather. Is that what I heard? A couple of our brothers and sisters. I guess it's flu season or something going on here. But anyway, what doesn't kill you will make you stronger. And so, um, praise God, we're, we're praying for all our brothers and sisters, anyone who's sick, who's not doing well, we lift them up in prayer on a regular basis, and, uh, and oh, praise God for our, our prayer warriors. The prayer of the righteous, the Bible says, availeth much. And so we continue to pray for each other all the time, and, and pray for Esther and I also, right? I mean, we're under constant, constant attack. The adversary hates us. We hate him also, don't, so don't worry. Um, but anyway, also we've got a couple of, uh, uh, we have a, a short video uh, montage of Joy, our sister Joy, that we raised money for West Haven Orphanage. She's there now, and she sent back a couple of videos. We're going to watch those in a minute, but we've got a couple of special announcements. We have two Mishkan babies that are going to be dedicated today. So we're going to call up girls first. She's getting changed? The boys ready? Boys are always ready. Let's bring, let's bring Nathaniel up then. Nathaniel. Alfredo. Alfredo and Francia wish to dedicate their son, Nathaniel, to the Lord. Amen. Praise God. So let's all stand. As we, as we honor the parents and their child, we're going to anoint him with oil and we're going to dedicate him. We're all going to stretch our hands out. We're going to bless him together. And we're going to use the uh, expensive oil. <laughs> Anointing oil with frankincense, myrrh, and spikenard. This is the expensive stuff. You've got to bring them up here, please. It even smells good. The good stuff. They're both good. Ladies first. What a beautiful family. You know your parents were married here, right? Before you guys existed. All three of you now, right? What a blessing. You guys literally took the Bible, be fruitful and multiply. That's be What a beautiful family, right? Give the Lord a big hand. Come on now. What a blessing. Okay, bring, bring him closer over here, right? Look, look at him. He's like, I'm ready, right? Nathaniel, you ready? We'll put a little oil on his forehead. And everyone stretched their hands out towards, towards him and the family. Father God, Father in heaven, we praise you. We thank you for this beautiful family that you've put together here at the Mishkan. And we lift up Nathaniel to you, Lord, a blessing from you. Quiet, Gianna. As, we, as, as they, the parents, as Francia and Alfredo, dedicate him to the Lord, that he would be a mighty man of God, that the Lord would use him mightily in the future, that he would use him to bring many people to righteousness. And that no, not only the family, but Nathaniel would shine like the stars, like the Bible says, amen. forever and ever and ever. Amen. Somebody say amen. amen. Congratulations. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Is he handsome or what? You better keep an eye on him with those blue eyes, those girls. Anyway, thank you so much. God bless you guys. Gianna, the famous Gianna. 
Mamma mia, mezze mare, da 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 See, Michael's got the best of both worlds. He has an Italian father and a Jewish mother. <laughs> Are you a Jewapi? Yes. Okay. Look at, look at, you're all happy. Look. <laughs> Amazing. Michael and Anna Maria would like to de dedicate Gianna to the Lord today also. So can I borrow her little forehead here for a little bit and you put a little oil on? Oh, hi, Gianna. <laughs> and we're all going to stretch our hands out towards the family and towards her. Yeah, smile. Heavenly Father, we praise you. We thank you for this family, for this, uh, this beautiful little girl named Gianna, that she would be like a Ruth in the Bible. That she would, that, that she would just love you, Lord, with all her heart, all the days of her life, that you would fill her with anointing and power, that you would give her a, a mouth that they would not be able to gain, say, nor resist, that she would be a, a mighty evangelist yes. and the Lord, and that she, that the Lord would use her mightily at some future point to bring many to himself, yes. to reconcile to himself. And we say this in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach and the people of God said, Amen. Amen. Congratulations. Give the Lord another big hand. We have one more next week. I shouldn't have prayed, Lord, bring children. I got to watch what I say. But anyway, anyway, you, you, you may be seated because now we're going to watch that video from Joy from West Haven. Now, uh, she, would, they were, she was not allowed to videotape the children's faces. So, but this is the orphanage that we're supporting, West Haven. And Joy is still there. And she sent a couple of videos. We put them together, right? And so let's watch and see what's going on there in, in Jamaica. So here I am, I am on the grounds of the West Haven Children's Home. I am getting a tour, my father and myself, um, of the various cottages. I cannot video the children, of course, that will be invading their privacy, but I am grateful to the Lord that we have arrived. There are several different cottages um, with the different children. We have the boys and girls cottages. Um, we also have, you know, different persons who are here. There is a school here for the children. And um, this is the West Haven Children's Bus right there. So it is wonderful. I will continue to get a little bit more tour of the building once again. I'm actually inside one of the cottages. This is one of the boys' cottages. Again, yes. What is it called? Vera's. Vera's Cottage. And this is Miss Gloria who actually founded West Haven. So, of course... I cannot take pictures of the children that would be in violation of their rights, but I'm grateful that I get the okay to take some pictures of their little beds. Um, and so, you know, this is how one of the cottage, for example, looks. You'll see the size of the bed. Uh, you'll see, right, so this is it. It's really nice and I'm grateful to the Lord for giving me uh, this opportunity to be here and to be with the children today. So... Good morning, everyone. Yes, I am here in the island of Jamaica. I arrived on Friday. Uh, this it is Wednesday morning, June 13. And as you can see, I am sorting out all the things, uh, shoes, um, clothing, um, a lot of clothing that I purchased, and also a lot of things that my brothers and sisters from the Michigan have given me. Uh, for the children so I will be making a trip over there and yes my father will be accompanying me to West Haven Children's Home this morning so I am just really grateful to the Lord that he kept me brought me safe to the island of Jamaica and I will be going out to see the children this morning and delivering these uh, footwear and clothing to them and so once again I want to thank everyone for your uh, all your donations things and your prayers please continue to keep me in your prayers um, as I continue to do this 
um, to the glory, to the honor and glory of the Lord. So I will keep you guys posted again. Um, goodbye, everyone. I miss you all. What a blessing. And we've, we've been a blessing to them, and they've been a blessing to us. So we continue. Um, uh, Joy has put together a foundation called the Joyful Foundation. And I believe she's opened up a bank account, so we're going to still partner with her. And uh, we're, we'll put a, a link when everything is done on our website to be able to continue to support. Because the Holy Spirit has put on her heart not just to do West Haven, but many different orphanages as he leads her all over the world. As a matter of fact, she said she already has one that the Lord put on her heart in Israel, an orphanage. So we'll continue to do that. What a blessing. Amen. And so um, that's it. That's all the announcement. Am, am I missing anything? No. Um, no, no one is going to give testimony today because no one volunteered, but that's okay. Um, you're going to give testimony? You're going to carry the Torah too? Yeah. Okay, Francia. Everyone stand up, please. Micha Mocha, the song that we are singing is the song that the children of Israel sang when they crossed the Red Sea on dry ground. It is found in the book of Exodus, chapter 15 and verse 11. Micha Mocha in Hebrew, English, who is like thee, O Lord? And of course the answer is there is none else. and truth came by Yeshua HaMashiach Baruch Hashem, blessed be His holy name Baruch Habab Hashem Adonai blessed is He who comes in the name of the Lord and when Moses would remove the ark he would say arise O Lord, let your enemies be scattered and let those that hate you flee from you, arise O Lord this morning, let your enemies be scattered, let every assignment of the enemy be broken this instant against us, against our families, against the Mishkan. In the name of Yeshua, every assignment of the enemy broken this instant. Father God, we lift up every brother and every sister who would not be here today, Lord, that are home, that are ill, that had to work, that, Lord, that you would open doors, that you would heal bodies, minds, set the captives free in the name of Yeshua. Let them come to your house and let them testify of what you have done in their lives among the brethren here in the name of Yeshua. Father God, we lift up family members, friends, neighbors, co-workers, 
everyone in our lives that doesn't know you, Lord, whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life, Lord. We lift up every one of these individuals, our children, our relatives, in the name of Yeshua, Father God. Draw them to yourself as you have done for each and every one of us. Let them taste and see that you are good. In the name of Yeshua. And Father God, bless those that are watching on the internet. Bless us. Lead us to all truth by your words. Set the captives free. Transform us. Conform us into the image of your Son. We thank you, Father, for filling your house with people from all backgrounds and languages and religion, that your house would be called a house of prayer for all nations. We thank you, Lord, for the Mishkan. We thank you, Lord, for all the miracles you have done over the years. We thank you for keeping the doors open over all these years, Lord. You're amazing. We thank you and praise you that the gates of hell have not prevailed against your Mishkan, Lord, in the name of Yeshua. And we praise you and thank you for everything you, every single thing you've done in our lives to this very moment, knowing as your word declares that all things work together for the good because we love him, because we love you, Lord, and because you have called us for your purpose. We thank you, Father in heaven, for your purpose to conform each and every one of us into the image of your Son, our Messiah, our Savior, our Lord, our King, the King of kings, and the Lord of Lords, in his name we pray this morning, the name Yeshua, HaMashiach, the world knows him as Jesus the Christ. In his name we pray, and the people of God said, Amen. That was a good amen. Thank you. Please remain standing as we honor the Lord for giving us not just the Torah, but all of the Word of God. The Brit Kadashah, the New Covenant, from Genesis to Revelation. Baruchu et Adonai Hamburach. Baruch Adonai Hamvorach Leolam Ba'ed. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Bachabanu Min Kol Ho'amim Benatan Lanu Et Torato Baruch Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen. And we said together, please, Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from among all peoples, given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. We have a new and better covenant as we do the new covenant blessing. First in Hebrew, then in English, together, please. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Natan Lanu Mashiach Yeshua V'chadib Roch HaLabrit Kadasha Baruch atah Adonai Notein HaBrit Kadasha Amen. We said, Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has given us Messiah Yeshua and the commandments of the new covenant. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the new covenant. Amen. Please give the Lord a big hand for all of his word from Genesis to Revelation. My lovely wife Esther is going to come up. And Alfredo's lovely wife, Francia, is going to come up. You're getting all emotional already, huh? Use the steps, please. Come on up. Love you, love you. We love you. We love them. We love this, their family. Praise God. You guys have been here for how many years? 14. 14 years. Give the Lord a big hand. And my lovely wife, Esther, you're going to chant a few verses. Shalach Lecha, Numbers 14, verses 6 through 12. And you're going to use me, me, Biblia. Numbers 14. Praise God. There you go. Come on up, ladies. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Alfredo, you're going to carry the Torah next week, you said? Okay. Thank you. Um, today I'm going to be chanting from the book of Numbers, Shalach um, Lecha. And um, before I do, no, yeah, the, the reverb when I sing. 
um, I just want to say that this is today was especially gratifying for me because Gabe and I have known I've known Franz and Alfredo for a long time, long before they even thought about marrying each other, um, and uh, and I've seen them grow. I've seen them grow in the Lord. Please turn that off. I've seen them grow in the Lord. I've seen them mature. And then I, I see the little seedlings <laughs> coming up. And I think I'm about as, I feel about as close to, I, I have no children of my own, but I, I feel almost like, I understand what a grandmother feels like <laughs> to watch these children. So I'm, I'm especially gratified that I've been here for a long time and watching you grow. And it's, it's, really, it's really something. Today I'm going to be chanting from the book of Numbers, chapter 14, uh, verses 6 through 12, Shalach Lecha, which means send for yourselves. Okay, now I'll take a little reverb D. Thank you. Yehoshua binun v'chalem ben yefune min batarim el aretz karu b'gdayem v'yomer hu'ekol ben Yisrael Joshua, the son of Nun, and Caleb, the son of Jephon, which were of them that searched the land, rent their cloth. And they spake unto all the company of the children of Israel, saying, The land which we, which we pass through to search it is an exceeding good land. If the Lord delight in us, then he will bring us into his land. And give it to us, and give it to us, a land which flow with milk and honey. Only rebel not ye against the Lord, neither fear ye the people of the land, for they are bread for us. Their defense is departed from them, and the Lord is with us. Fear them not. But all the congregation they stones them with the stones, and the glory of the Lord appeared in the tabernacle of the congregation before all the children of Israel. And the Lord said unto Moses, How long will these people provoke me? And how long will it be they believe me? For all the signs which I, ha I have shown them among them, I will smite them with the pestilence and the disinherit them. And will make them, and will make of thee a greater nation and mightier than they. And Moses said unto the Lord, Then the Egyptians shall hear it, for thou brought us up. Oh, I'm sorry, twelve. Nation and mighty, mightier, mightier than they. Amen. Yeah. 
um, um, we have heard from our brothers and sisters this many um, testimonies about listening from the Lord and hesitating to do what they're hearing from the Lord. But uh, somehow we I have watched and observed that is the way the Lord training train us, no? He give us an instruction and maybe we do it, maybe we don't, but he give us many chances to practice what uh, he has put in the heart of Gabriel to teach us, to listen from the Lord, to be close to him. And even we have been 14 years and we keep listening to the same encouragement, it's never enough. <laughs> Uh, the same measures is what we need, is what uh, my, per my personal life has worked. Uh, listening to him, sometimes I practice, sometimes I don't. Uh, I practice better than before, then I go back, but at the end, we, we all are learners, right? So this time, I heard from the Lord to have a baby. <laughs> and I say, no, no, this is not from the Lord. <laughs> because, you know, I, we, we're done. And it was so hard to have our baby children because they're very close together. There were no family here. And uh, we were a lot different. Alfredo was different. I was different. We didn't, uh, we were in a time because of the, the, the hard work that is raising children. We were overwhelmed and we were just married. Like we got married and three months later I was pregnant so we didn't even know each other. We had no idea what being married was, being uh, for, forgive each other, like tolerate each other, love each other with the love of Yeshua. So that was very hard. It was traumatic, to tell you the truth. And what I hear from my uh, Hispanic uh, people is that, oh, you're going to, uh, okay, with children enough, you know. Women are the ones that take the job, so you gotta do something like, yeah, enough. And, and we hear it even from our moms, our aunts, our, you know, everybody. And so I decided that they were our two children, that we were perfect like that, and that the, that hard time was done and gone, and praise the Lord. Um, then I say, no, this is not from the Lord. Then I kept hearing from one way and another that we should have another child. And, and I say, no, Lord, you have to be very clear. <laughs> you have to speak to me with that sound voice. I didn't hear that sound voice. I was maybe in the flesh. But uh, we were getting together with some brothers and sisters out of Mishkan. And that happened when you're hanging out with brothers and sisters out of the Mishkan, <laughs> and my sister Donna, we were talking about different subjects at uh, Benji's birthday, and my sister Donna suddenly came with this topic and say, yeah, because, and she just literally repeat my prayer to the Lord. You say you do everything the Lord tells you, you surrender your will to the Lord, but you take care of this. And I say, oh, Lord, I think I get it. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> and so um, and that, I, that was a year after I kept hearing from the Lord to have a baby. And I say, I, okay, I'm going to do it. I trust you. I know you always want what is best for me. I was ready to go to work. I told that I was dumb because my daughters are all, already big. I homeschool them. They're going back to school. I'm gonna go. To, I'm going to work. You know, normal life. Um, but it was. It, it, I didn't want to be rebellious because I know that what blesses us, hitting one week just another that that is uh, obeying the Lord. I know that is true. So I got pregnant, and as soon as I found out that I was pregnant, say no, how silly I was. This wasn't from the Lord. I forgot all these symptoms, and then nine, for nine months, I was very sick. And as the pregnancy progressed, I was, this, this remember came to my mind, no? how hard it is to breastfeed him, how hard it is to wake up when you want to sleep, when you need to sleep, how hard it is when they start walking, how hard is this and that, and they say, 
no, 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 that was such a mistake. I should have waited for the Lord to speak to me with that voice. Like, and no, you're going to be blessed. Children are blessed. You will see. He will be your helper. Yes, in 20 years, maybe when I'm <laughs> very old, I know, Lord, so how you will show me that you will, that, that was a blessing in 20 years. But uh, to my surprise, uh, as soon as Nathaniel was born, he, he was a joy. I didn't understand before what when people, is the truth. When people say, oh, children are a blessing and a joy, and they say, oh, yeah, right, <laughs> a joy. <laughs> For me, it was only work. Um, but since he was born and he was filled with that peace, and it is a joy. Uh, actually, I don't remember to be happier than this ever in my life. Um, and furthermore, what I had heard from women that, oh no, children, you know, it's enough. They're so hard. One, two is enough. It's not what I think now about having children. I would like to have more. <laughs> <laughs> But if the Lord, if the Lord, if the Lord tells me, because I know that there are other now and on the other side, you know, that I have to be cautious, you know, because there are a lot of, a lot of things around having children, but uh, it's truly deep in my heart that I know children are a joy, it's a blessing, and I just feel so eager to continue obeying the Lord, even what I hear from him is something that I kind of crazy to me. Uh, now I, I feel more encouraged than ever to continue practicing this mission of trying to be in his presence, going back to his presence, uh, listening to him, and obeying. <laughs> Glory to Yeshua. Amen. Lovely. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord. Let's give thanks to the Lord for giving us the... Um, the, the, the Torah, the leaves from the tree of life for the healing of the nations and for the raising of our children. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has given us a Torah of truth, implanting within us everlasting life. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. No, Esther, we're not having any children, okay? <laughs> I like being a grandfather. <laughs> Bring the kids over, fill them up with sugar, and send them home. Let them bounce off the walls at their parents' house. Right? Easy. I like being a grandpa. But anyway, thank you, ladies. Thank you. Beautiful testimony. Uh, obedience, right, is better than sacrifice. And when we do what the Lord tells us, we're blessed to do what he says. And um, this week's Torah portion, we're, we're studying the nation of Israel as they have come out of Egypt, as they came out of bondage, and, and, and the trip that God has them on. Uh, we're studying this week's Torah portion is send on your behalf, shalach lecha in Hebrew. We're studying Numbers chapter 13, verse 1 through chapter 15. So it's three chapters, 13, 14, and 15 in the book of Numbers. And then the Haftorah portion is the book of Joshua, chapter 2, verses 1 through 24. And what we're seeing this week is God, through Moses, tells Moses to pick 12 leaders from the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, how, how many know that the 12 tribes of Israel are Jacob's 12 sons? They comprise of the 12 tribes of Israel. The Bible says that 70 people were in Egypt and they became a mighty nation over the years. In 400 and plus years, 
they became upwards of a million people just from 70 people. God blessed the nation of Israel. After Joseph died, who had favor with Pharaoh, there was a Pharaoh that was raised up that, that put them in slavery, put them in hard bondage, which, by the way, Monday is Juneteenth, which celebrates the, the liberation of the slaves in Texas in 1865. And so praise God that uh, the Jewish people suffered slavery just like Africans suffered slavery. So we have something in common, amen? You guys only had it for a few years. We had it for much longer, so I don't want to hear you crying. <laughs> no, but anyway, we have something in common, and slavery is, slavery is horrible. I mean, what human beings can do to each other, I mean, I, I don't think there's a worse crime than that, than to abuse people to that level. And Jewish people have been abused, and black people have been abused, and anyone who's abused, I mean, it's terrible. And, 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 and all those people that caused the, that harm is going to stand before the Lord one day, and they're going to have to give an account of what they did to other human beings. And, and they're going to go to a place called the Lake of Fire, which was prepared for the devil and his angels. So no one's going to get away with anything here on, on this planet. And the Lord knows everything and knows every heart. That's why we need to pray for every single person because they do not know what they are doing. If they knew what they were doing and what the consequences were, they wouldn't do one-tenth of what people do. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge and wisdom. But anyway, so these 12 tribes become a mighty nation under bondage. God saves them from this bondage. So he brings them out of Egypt with the blood of the Lamb on the doorpost of their homes. Yeshua, Jesus, is known as the Lamb of God who also shed his blood. And so they come out of bondage. They get saved. Would you say that that's salvation? And after salvation, God deals with them. And that's what's so beautiful about studying Israel because it, 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 it's similar to our walk. We study their walk to understand our walk. Because what I've noticed over the years, a lot of people teaching, and they don't understand this walk. They don't understand what God wants from us. I've heard many brothers and sisters uh, in, in, in panic saying, what does God want from me? Now, if you knew what God wanted from you, you wouldn't be panicking. If you understood where God is taking you and the end game, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't be resisting God. A lot of people resist God. And the opposite is true. We're to submit to God and we're to resist the adversary. And so if you understand how God is working in your life, it makes it much easier. Not that everything is easy in our lives because some of the things that we go through are difficult. But the Bible says that when we love God, all things work together for the good. It doesn't say all things are good. It says all things are working together for the good. And the end game as a new covenant believer, a New Testament believer, is to be conformed into the image of his son. We're to be like Jesus, plain and simple. That is our predetermined destination. Israel had a predetermined destination just like us. Israel, had, uh, Israel the, the, the children of Israel, had a predetermined destination under the Old Covenant. It was the land of Israel. And this week's God, as I said, instructs Moses, send 12 leaders from the 12 tribes to spy out this land that I've promised to give to them. And so they take the 12 leaders, one from each tribe, it's named in this week's Torah portion, and they go and spy out the land. And they see this amazing land. They've been, through the, they've been in the desert now for, a, for a, 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 a time, for a number of months already, at least I believe a year. And they go and spy out the land of Israel, and they say it's a beautiful land, flowing with milk and honey, just like God said. It's ours to be had. And 10 out of the 12 come back and say, we can't have it. The people in there are too strong. There's giants in the land. We're afraid. It, we can't take it. We can't have it. And they bring back, 10 out of the 12 bring back a negative report. Out of the 12, only two come back, uh, Joshua and Caleb, and say, no, God's with us. We can take it. It's ours. He promised it. Blah, blah, blah. The other ten said, no, we can't, we, we're, we're too weak, we're too small, there's giants, we can't have it. 
and, and they bring everybody down and everybody starts to mourn and everybody starts to complain and everyone says, oh, we should have died in Egypt or we should have died in the wilderness. God brought us out here. And, and it, just, it just, it discouraged the whole group. We don't know anybody like that now. You know, the Bible says specifically just just like they had a predetermined destination and God said it's yours you can have it and they didn't believe God and because they didn't believe God the Bible says that he kept them in the wilderness wandering for 40 years he got angry with that group I mean as a matter of fact in the book of Hebrews it talks about Paul brings this up go with me to Hebrews chapter 3 and I'm saying this because this can happen to us today. I mean, you know, the more things change, the more things stay the same. I mean, it's sad to report that there are leaders among us that call themselves believers that are, that are, that, that, that are no better than non-believers because they discourage the people from our predetermined destination. It says in verse 8 in chapter 3 of the book of Hebrews, Harden not your hearts, or, or let, back up to verse 7, Wherefore, as the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit said, Today, if you will hear His voice, verse 8, Harden not your hearts, as in the provocation in the day of temptation in the wilderness, when your fathers tempted me, proved me, and saw my works forty years. Wherefore, I was grieved with that generation and said, They do always err in their heart. They have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath, they shall not enter into my rest. Verse 12, that has no bearing on us. Of course it has a bearing. It says, Take heed, brethren, talking to us now, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God, but exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin. For we are made partakers of Christ, of Messiah, if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast unto the end. While it is said today, if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke. However, not all that came out of Egypt by Moses, but with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned? The Bible says, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness. What does that mean? It means they never made it to the promised land. They died short of the promise. Were they saved? They were saved. They came out of Egypt. You mean you could be saved today? Salvation? and fall short of the promises of God? Yes, I know many brothers and sisters, myself included, that, fell, that were falling short of the promises of God, some because of our own unbelief, and some because we have leaders that discourage us, just like they did. Because I remember when I first got saved and I received the Holy Spirit. Now the Bible says specifically in John chapter 1 that Whoever receives him, that whoever accepts him, whoever calls upon the name of the Lord, receives power to become the sons of God. I, I don't want to misquote that scripture. So go with me to John chapter 1, the gospel of John, and look exactly what it says here. And see, and see if we're talking the truth. But as many as received him, verse 12, John chapter 1 and verse 12, as many as received him, somebody say, I received him. That's how you get saved. As many as received him, to them gave he power to, to become what? To become the sons, plural, of God, even to them that believe on, on his name, which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of men, but of God. We are born of God. We're empowered. We've received power to become. In other words, God was with the nation of Israel to come to the promised land, to the land of Israel. Our promise, our predetermined destination is to be conformed into the image of His Son. 
In other words, we're empowered, that's the promise, to be like Jesus. Are you with me? And yet there are leadership among us because I was affected or infected by these kind of bad reports from leadership that said you can never be like him. He is him and you are you. you. We all fall short of the glory of God. The spirit is willing. The flesh is weak. I heard every excuse of why I could not become like him when the Bible says the opposite. The same thing that happened to the nation of Israel. The leadership discouraged the people from receiving or, or, or getting to their predetermined destination. And what happens when you don't get to your predetermined destination? What happens after salvation and you don't reach the promises of God? You get discouraged. You want to quit. You want to give up. You want to blame God and say, God, I mean, you're not, you're not keeping your promises. How many know that he's a promise keeper? And a covenant is an agreement. We're in covenant with God. And God has empowered us by the Holy Spirit. I mean, it took me a while. I was, even, I was even convinced by leadership that I didn't have the same Holy Spirit that he did. I mean, how many Holy Spirits are there? I mean, if you have the Holy Spirit, we have the same Holy Spirit that was upon him when he walked on the earth. Amen. Yea or nay? Amen. The same Spirit. Amen. Imagine now, are we empowered? The only thing that needs to change is this thing between your ears. The Bible says in Romans chapter 12, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. But if you get around leadership and brothers and sisters, they all know, oh no, Gabriel, you can never be like him. And, and when you're immature, it makes sense because you think to yourself, I am nothing like him. And then you may believe them and say, you're right. I'm nothing like him. I can never be like that. And I thought that. First, I thought I didn't have the same anointing that was on him because they were trying to convince me, no, you have the watered-down version of the Holy Spirit. You have the junior version. It took me a while. It took John 17 to free me from that lie because notice what the Lord says. So some people believe they don't have the same Holy Spirit. Until I'm reading in, in, in John 17, um, which says in verse 22, when he's praying to the Father, in John 17 and verse 22, and he says, And the glory which you gave me, I have given them. Amen. Hello? Amen. Somebody said, I got to get some of these cobwebs out of my, my, out of my head. I got to get some of these negative reports out of my head. Because unbelief will keep you down, will keep you back. Israel paid a huge price for unbelief. And only two out of that whole group, Joshua and Caleb, believed God. And the rest didn't believe him. So what happened to that generation? The Bible says they wandered around for 40 years. Their carcasses fell in the wilderness. In other words, they died after coming out of Egypt short of the promised land of God, because simple, they didn't believe God. And how many know that, that God so loved the world, it said, this famous scripture, that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes on him should not perish, but have eternal life. And so uh, we're either going to believe God, or we're going to believe people that don't believe God. And leadership comes in God's name, and gives you a, a bad report, and you get discouraged. And you'll be wandering around after your salvation, not getting any closer to the promises of God, and you get frustrated, and you may even get angry with God. I started to get angry with the Lord because my life was not improving, my life was not changing, and I was, and, and I was frustrated, and I was ready to give up, just like they were. Oh, we should have died in Egypt. We should have never come out. You should have killed us there. You should have killed us before now. I mean, how many people that are believers have actually thought of that? I actually thought I was better off as a pagan in my old life because I'm not moving forward. I didn't get around the right people. I didn't get around the right leadership that encouraged me, that exhorted me, that told me, yes, you have a predetermined destination. And everything is working together in your life, the good, the bad, and the ugly, because God is taking you 
and all you got to do is submit to God and resist the adversary. Yes, he's older than you. Yes, he's bigger than you. Yes, he's smarter than you. But you've got Almighty God on your side. It doesn't matter how big they are. It doesn't matter how, how, how they push against you. It doesn't matter that they're smarter than you, they're older than you. It doesn't matter. You've got Almighty God on your side. And if he says you can have it, you can have it. And all you got to do is believe it and not quit. Because that's what the adversary wants. No, give it up. Stop. You'll never make it. You're too stupid. You're not Jewish. You're too old. You're too young. I mean, any excuse, right? I mean, no, there's no such thing as too old. God started to use Moses when he was 80 years old and gave him an extra 40 years to lead the children of Israel. But even Moses didn't make it into the promised land because he was disobedient. He didn't believe the Lord. I mean, unbelief will keep you back from the promises of God. I mean, I'll never forget people kept saying when I first got saved, oh, God has some mighty plans for you. And I'm like, what is it? What does God want with me? How many people have said, God, what do you want from me? I mean, when you declared your love for God, God already had a predetermined destination for you. All you had to say is, God, I love you. God, I apologize. God, I'm sorry for my sins. How many people said that to the Lord? He loves, you know, parents, tomorrow's Father's Day, parents love to hear, I love you. I mean, when my daughters tell me they love me, they can have whatever they want. I'm a softy. Our Father in Heaven is like that. How many people hate Him? How many people turn their back on Him? How many people disrespect Him? I mean, can you imagine the Creator of Heaven and Earth? And you think they disrespected him? It said he, he came into the world as a human being. They treated him like royalty, right? No, they, they, they cursed him out. They spit on him. They, 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 they killed him. I mean, the, the truth came into the world. The, the creator comes into the world, and they totally reject him. I mean, that's how crazy we are as human beings. But anyway, Romans 8, 28. Somebody say, God has a predetermined destination for me. And we know that all things work together for good to them that... What's the qualification? That you love God. Does it say you have to be perfect? It just says you've got to love God. Somebody say, I love God. Is it, are you embarrassed to say that? I love God. I love my wife. I'm not embarrassed to say that. I love my children. I love God. To them that love God, to them who are the what? Are called according to? See, this is where a lot of people get confused. Because when you declare your love for God, you still have your own purposes. Now you want God to do what you want. And then you find out that's not the way it works. Because we're wanting creatures. And we think, I'm going to pray to God, he's going to give me what I want. I may know that you get what you want when you give him what he wants. A lot of people, their prayer doesn't get answered. They get frustrated. God this, God that. And they're like, God, are you listening? Why don't you get what you want? Um, keep your finger here. Uh, go to John 15 and verse 7. Somebody say, I like my prayer answered. I like God to answer my prayers. If you abide in me, says the Lord, and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you want. In other words, when you do what I say, says the Lord, then I will do what you say. Yes. Hello? Does that make him God? Because think about it. If he did what you wanted instead of what he wanted, that would make you God. And you and I ain't God. There's only one God, somebody say. So what does God say? You do what I want, then I'll do what you want. Deal? Now, if you know how things work, then you're going to say, Lord, what is your will? If you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will, and it shall be. What is God's will in my life? What was God's will for the nation of Israel when they came out of Egypt? His will was for them to inherit the promised land. Go look at it. Make sure it's what I said it is. 
make sure that it's what I promised. They went, they said, great promised land, beautiful, flowing with milk and honey. They brought back, it took two men to carry these grapes. Were they talking grapes or grapefruits? Grapes, the size of, I mean, amazing. They come back, oh, it's a land, beautiful land, flowing with milk and honey, just like God said, but can't have it. Can't have it. He just said we could have it. No, it's not going to happen. They're too big. It's too this. It's too that. Can't. And brought a negative report. And there are and there are people today that are doing the same thing to our brothers and sisters. Discouragement, unbelief. Oh, you can never be like him. We all fall short of the glory. The spirit is willing. The flesh is weak. You'll never be like him. Somebody say, we're supposed to be like him. To those that received him, gave he what? The power to become. But you can never become on your own. I don't care how religious you are. I don't care how smart you are. I don't care how much you know the Bible. We're empowered by the Holy Spirit now to become. So it says now, and in, in, uh, go back to uh, Romans 8, 29. So it says here, for whom he did foreknow. How many know God knew us before we knew him? Yea or nay? Does God know us, each and every one of us, intimately? Yeshua, the Son of God, says, your hairs on your head are numbered. A bird doesn't fall onto the ground that he doesn't know. God knows everything about everything. I, I've told people, you can fool people, but you can't fool God. If you honor God with your lips, your heart is far from him, you're not going anywhere in the kingdom of God. This is serious business. I mean, God has a serious predetermined destination for every person that declares their love for him. Not for the haters, not for the non-believers, for people to say, I love God. When you've made the decision to love God, God has a predetermined destination. It says, for whom he did foreknow, he also did what? Predestinate. To be what? To be conformed. Now, let me ask you a question. When you gave your heart to the Lord, would you say you were deformed? I was deformed. What are you shaking your head? I was nothing like Jesus. Somebody said, I'm nothing like him. When I started, nothing like him. Uh, you needed a telescope between me and him. That's how far away I got. Can somebody relate to that? So if you get a negative report and you hear people when you first start out, you'll never be like Jesus, that makes perfect sense. I'm nothing like Jesus. I'm nothing like him. I'll never be like him. Because when I first started reading about him, it was like, he's a goody two-shoes. I'm a nasty, you know what? He wants to save you. I want to kill you. He wants to bless you. I want to rob you. He wants to bless you. I want to curse you out. I want to run you over and then back up and run you over again. I want to do unto others before they do unto you. I mean, I'm nothing like him. So then I'm hearing, you'll never be like him. Well, okay. <laughs> Does that mean I still get to go to heaven? Yeah, he shed his blood. He died. He did everything for you. You can just sit there and wait for heaven. I'm like, okay, sounds good to me. When you're spiritually lazy, you don't have to do anything. Hey, I'll sit on my blessed assurance. What do I care? As long as I go to heaven, you're telling me I'm going, I don't have to change? No, you're, you're cool the way you are. Stay in your deformed condition. He shed his blood for your deformity. Paid for all your sins. You could just keep on sinning. I'm like, I like this religion. I don't have to do anything. He did it for me. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. I don't have to do nothing. I like that. I've never done anything. Oh, you're Jewish. You never did anything? No, we never did. My dad said there's no God, so we didn't do nothing. So I come into this religion, and they're like, hey, Jesus did everything. You're cool. I'm like, okay, I get to go to heaven? Yeah, you get to go to heaven. My brother, your name is written in heaven. We'll see you in heaven. How many of you have heard that? Come on now. They're still saying that. So for whom he did foreknow, he also did what? To be conformed 
to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among. So what does God want from my life? Because I love him, because now I'm born again. Now I have the Holy Spirit. Where is he taking me? He's taking me to my predetermined destination. What's my predetermined destination? To be conformed into the image of his son. Why am I to be conformed into the image of his son? Who's the son of God? Who am I? What am I? Where do I come from? What am I doing here? Genesis 1.26. What does God say when he creates us? Let us make man in our image and our likeness. Let us make you and I ratones, ratas, Mickey Mouse Club. Let's make the Mickey Mouse Club like us. And the Mickey Mouse Club wakes up on this earth and goes, who's God? We've never seen him. What is God like? And who is God? I have no clue. So we make gods out of everything. This is my God. That's my God. This is my God. That's my God. Because we don't know who he is. We've never seen him. Somebody said, I've never seen him. How can you be like somebody you've never seen? Yea or nay? So who's this Jesus person? And why did he come into the world? Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1. So God created us in his image and likeness. Because somebody say God loved the world. He gave his, his only begotten son. Why did he give his son to us? Because God at different times and sundry times and in different manners spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets has in these last days Somebody say, we're in the last days because I said so or because the Bible says so? Somebody say, Bible says we're in the last days. We've been in the last days ever since Jesus walked this earth. What does that mean? We're in the last of the last. And we still don't get it. I mean, this person, this, the, the Son of God walked in this earth almost 2,000 years ago and we're still walking around in a circle? I mean, is is that a shame? Come on now. It's shameful. Has in Lee's last day spoken unto us by a son whom he has appointed heir of, somebody say everything. Okay, now we can start. Julia's here. He has appointed Yeshua, the son of God, heir of all things, by whom also he made the world. In other words, he's not a little God. Somebody say co-creator. Did he make the worlds? Is he creator? So the creator took on a body and became a human being and walked in this world. Does that mean that God's a human being? No. Could he become a human being? If we were cockroaches, he would have become a cockroach. Just to talk cockroach to us, you know, with a little... Do you ever see cockroaches talking to each other? You see what I'm saying here? Could God become a human being? So don't look at God like a human being, okay? Could God become a human being if he wanted to, to communicate with his creation? So he's, he made the worlds. Now who is this Jesus person? Verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. Who is Yeshua? Who is Jesus? The express image of God and the express image of his person. Genesis 1.26 becomes alive to us now because we've been made in his image and his likeness. How did God create us to be? He, create us, he created us to be like that. What has the adversary done to us? He has, he has destroyed us. Yeshua says he only comes to steal, kill, and destroy. By the time I came to the Lord, I was destroyed by the adversary, by misinformation, by the one who came to steal, kill, and destroy, by a liar, a professional liar, the father of lies, had ruined my life. I was nothing like the way I was created to be. That's why he's my savior. That's why he's my rescue. 
That's why he's the door. That's why he's the way, the truth, and the life. Because he came to get me from my misery, from my deformity, and he said, I'll take you the way, exactly the way you are, I'll take you in your deformity. I'll take you in your destruction. And I will fill you with the anointing. I will fill you with the Holy Spirit. I'll forgive everything you've ever done before. And I'm now taking you to a completely new life. Old things have passed away. Everything has become new. You're a new creature now. You're empowered by God to become what you were supposed to be from the beginning of time. And then you got people running around saying, no can't happen. Not you. Maybe me. I'm anointed. That's why God gave me a private jet. Because I'm so anointed. And you guys, you need me. You need, I'm going to impart my anointing to you. But you're going to have to write a big check for it. Because the anointing doesn't come cheap. You got to pay for it. You want me to pray for you? I mean, I heard this pastor, you need to give him $50,000 just to have lunch with him. You buy me McDonald's, I'll have lunch with you. I'm a cheap date. Because freely you have received, freely give. I mean, I am so happy sharing the good news of Messiah Yeshua, that this is for everyone, that if you love him and you've received him into your life and you have the Ruach HaKodesh in Hebrew, you have the Holy Spirit, you're empowered, you're equipped to become what the devil has ruined your life with. And you will go from glory to glory just like the Bible says. You just got to believe him, you just got to stick with him, and you don't give up no matter what happens. No matter how big they are, no matter what they bark, no matter that he walks about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour, you just tell him to get lost in Jesus' name. Get thee behind me, like Yeshua would say. Amen? And you just keep on keeping on, as the word says, and you never say quit. And we're to encourage each other. I'm here to encourage. I'm here to say this is ours. I want to be a Joshua. I want to be a Caleb. I don't want to be one of these naysayers. I want to believe God for what he tells us. If he's going to work everything together for good in my life because I love him and I have a predetermined destination to be conformed to the image of his son, that's a tremendous promise. Because not only did he promise the land of Israel to them, he promised to us the God of Israel. We are to be like the God of Israel. I mean, does it get better than that? If you can't say amen, you fell asleep. <laughs> Awake, O Israel. Put off your slumber, and the truth will set you free. I mean, come on. How long are we going to be robbed? How long are we going to be walking around in a circle? How long are we going to doubt? How long are we not going to believe him? How long are we going to be held back our whole life? How I many know oh, you can be saved and walk around in a circle going nowhere for the rest of your life? And I'm not saying you're not going to heaven, but when you get to heaven, you're gonna and, and the Lord's gonna say, <laughs> My child, you blew it, baby. <laughs> Rabbi Gabe's been telling you for how long now? 14 years, Francia? Alfredo, how many years? How many years you've been here? How many years you've been hearing this message? that you are who you are and that God has empowered you and that everything has become new now. You're a new creature now. You're nothing like the old person. Even when you try to go backwards, how many people have tried to go backwards? Don't raise your hand. They'll use it against you in a court of law. And you notice when you try to go back to your old life, the door's closed. Even when you look back, not good to look back. Because all that is gone. Old things have passed away. Everything has become new. You can't uncreature yourself now. We're new creatures. Once you loved him and once you accepted him and the Holy Spirit came to live in you, now the Bible says he will never leave you or forsake you. So you cannot go back to being the old person because you're not the old person anymore. And the only thing that's got to change is this. 
Be transformed. Be changed. Be conformed. I think that's in Romans 12, if I'm not mistaken. I'm running out of things to say here. Romans 12 and 1. I beseech you. I'm begging you, Paul is saying. I beseech you, therefore, brethren. Is he talking to us? By the mercies of God that you present your bodies a living sacrifice. In other words, he's not looking for roadkill. Well, Lord, you know, I'm beat up. He knows you're beat up. Lord, I'm nothing like you. He knows that. You just present yourself the way you are as a living sacrifice. If you're still breathing, you're a living sacrifice. By the way, when I first got here, I was barely breathing. I mean, I like, I, mean, I like the name Mishkan David. It means MD. I came in on a stretcher here. I literally came in on a stretcher. I was like, Ugh, God save me. That's all I could say. And then for the first two years, I cried in the back there because I thought, man, I was going to hell. I didn't even know it. I got to go tell somebody. A lot of people are going that way. Most of my friends and family, I got to open my mouth. And then when I opened my mouth, all hell broke loose. Devil wanted to kill me. Devil wanted to kill this place. I'm like, devil, there's nobody here. Go pick on a big church. He goes, I got him. I don't need, I don't need to go over there because they're talking, uh, you'll never become like Jesus. I don't need to mess with that church. I've got, I've, got, I've got thousands of people. They're non-believers. They don't believe you can become like Jesus. They don't believe you, can have, you have the same power. They don't believe you have the same glory. They don't believe you can lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. The lame shall walk. The blind shall see. The, the gospel is preached. They're not preaching that. They're preaching, give us 10% of your money. I will go out and preach this garbage, I mean this gospel, all over the world in my private chat. And I'll tell people that I am the, I'm the anointed one and you guys are the annoying one. And give me $50,000 to have lunch with you. I mean, it's sickening. I want to throw up some of the stuff that these people say out there. So I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. In other words, present yourself. Amen? Present yourself. And so, verse 2. And be not conformed to this world. Be not conformed to this world, but by be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. That you may prove what God's will is in your life. Are you with me? Yea or nay? Now, does this offend people? Yes. The gospel is offensive to those that don't accept it, to those that don't believe it. Either we're going to believe him or we're not going to believe him. Either you're going to step on some toes and, oh, Gabriel, you're picking on the church. He picked on false doctrine all the time. He said they were they were they they were they were vipers. He called them snakes. People say you're mean. I'm not mean. I'm just disgusted because that that false doctrine touched me when I first came into the kingdom of God. That false doctrine messed up my walk with the Lord for the first years of my walk with God. I was I was stifled by that by, by that false doctrine. And Yeshua warned us that that's what would happen in the last days. He sat on the Mount of Olives. His, his, his disciples came to him privately in, in 24 and verse 3 in Matthew. And they said, Lord, tell us what shall be the sign of your coming and of the end of the world. And the first thing he tells them, take heed. Take heed. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name and shall deceive many. Yeah, I'm picking on false doctrine. I'm picking on, on, on garbage that's being preached out there in the name of Jesus because it affected my life. And I don't care how many toes I step on. Amen? 
I wasn't hired by a committee. I was hired to preach the gospel by God. And I'm not on salary here. I got my own job. God said, keep your day job because you're going to step on a lot of religious toes when you open your mouth. And you're going to offend many. I've offended 2,000 years of false preaching and false gospel that has come in the name of Jesus, that has ruined lives for generations. And I am not going to pull any punches. I'm not going to pull any punches. Either you're doing what he said or you're doing what somebody else said. And if what he said offends you, that's your problem because he said, blessed is he who is not offended in me. I just say what he says. What did he say is going to happen in the last days? Somebody say, we're in the last days. Take heed. All these prophets that I've heard that come out of the church, they never say that. Oh, we're going to, do, we're going to have a prophecy conference. Prophet, why don't you say the first thing he prophesied? Because you're part of the problem instead of the solution. Oh, no, we're going to be raptured out of here before anything happens. Liar, what happens if we're not raptured out? So you got a bunch of weak people that barely walk with God, that have, don't even have the faith of a mustard seed, don't even believe they walk in the power of God, that have the same anointing as Jesus. You've set up a bunch of wimps, and now you're telling them they're going to be out of here before the, before the smoke clears. And what happens if it doesn't? What happens if you've got to face persecution? What happens if you've got to face, you got to face some tribulation in this world before the Lord comes? Are you ready? No. We've been busy listening to liars. Hello? What has that done for you? Nothing. Many are going to come in my name. Whose name? Saying, I am anointed. Can't tell you how many times I've heard leaders with large flocks saying, I am anointed. In other words, I am anointed, you're not. I have a special anointing, you don't. How many know there's one anointing? How many know there's one Holy Spirit? You've got the super anointing and I have the, the mini anointing. And I need you? Somebody say, the word of God says you don't need anybody to teach you. Hello? Are you with me? I think that's in 1 John. Are you with me? Somebody say, I got to step on some toes here. If I step on some toes, we don't need a bigger building. Because I empty the seats out. Are you happy to do that? Well, Moses started out with a million-some church, and he ended up with two. Jesus preached to thousands. He ended up with 120. I've been preaching this gospel now since 1995, and look at the results here. People love to have people itch, you know, scratch their ears and tell you how wonderful you are in, in your sin. And it's okay to stay deformed in Jesus because Jesus did it for you. You know how many churches preach that every Sunday on the wrong day, not even on the Sabbath? They can't even get the day right. At least I, at least I, I uh, respect my seven-day Adventist brothers and sisters. They got the day right. They got a lot of other stuff not right, but they got the day right. Verse 26, 1 John chapter 2. These things I have written to you are concerning them that seduce you. How many know there's spirits that seduce you? Seduce you from what? From your predetermined destination. I mean, what is the adversary after? You think the adversary wants you and I to be like Jesus? What happens when you and I become like Jesus? Who loses? Who gets stomped on? He loses. You think the adversary is going to sit by and watch you become like Jesus and not throw the kitchen sink at you? Are you with me? But the anointing which you have received, somebody say, I've received the anointing, I've received the Holy Spirit. 
but the anointing which you have received of him abides in you, and you need not that any man teach you, but as the same anointing teaches you of all things, and is truth, and is no even as it has taught you, you shall abide in him. In other words, what is the word of God saying? The word of God is saying that no one but the Holy Spirit himself can take you to your predetermined destination. No human being can do this. As a human being standing here, I can encourage you, but I cannot do it for you. Because think about it. Who else but God himself knows how you're not like Jesus? Every area of your life. How I many know we have areas of our life that are nothing like Jesus? Who is the only one that's going to determine that? Who is the only one that's going to deal with every area of your life to conform you to the image of his son? Yerne. Who's qualified for that? The only one qualified is God himself through the person of the Holy Spirit. One thing we teach no more is saying what? Know the Lord, for we shall all know him. Yea or nay? Are you born again? You know God. Where's God taking me? Where's he taking me? He's conformed me into the image of his son. Have you noticed when he deals with one area of your life, then he goes on to another area of your life? Have you noticed when you don't get it the first time, you go through the same situation over and over and over and over? Have you noticed that in your walk with God? And you say to the Lord, why am I in this situation again? Why? Because you didn't learn it the first time. It's sort of what people believe in reincarnation. They believe in reincarnation. You're going to come back because you didn't get it the first time. I don't believe in reincarnation. I believe in reinstitutionizing your whatever problem you had. You'll go over the same problem in your life. How many people have said, I've gone over the same problem more than once? Why is that happening in my life? Because you didn't learn it the first time. God's taking you through it again. Because you didn't get it. Somebody say, he's a good teacher. He will conform me. My job is to submit. My job is to present myself as a living sacrifice. My job is just to go with God. My job is to trust Him. My job is to, to understand that He's taking me whatever He's taking me through. And how many know that some things are very painful? You know why things are painful? Because old habits die hard. In other words, the things you and I have done for many years that are not Christ-like, that are not like the Messiah, God has to deal with. Because he doesn't want any area of your, any area of your life, my life, that is not Christ-like, that is not like the Messiah, is a suffering area of your life. Is an area of your life that is painful and that is lame, the Bible says. And God wants to take every area of your life and my life that is lame, that is not Christ-like, that is not like the Messiah, and he wants to conform every area of your life to be 100% like Yeshua. Amen. Now, let me ask you a question. Imagine your life, imagine you reached your predetermined destination, and, you've, and you work with the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit work with you, and you wake up one day and you're 100% like Jesus. How would your life be as opposed to where you live now? Amazing. Somebody say amazing. Why? Because he was amazing. And God created us to be amazing. Somebody say, God created me to be amazing? Yes. God created you and I in his image and his likeness. God created us to be like him. Who is he like? Yeshua is the likeness of the, the glory and the likeness of our Father. So in John 14, when we read last night, when the disciples said, Jesus, show us the Father, what did he say? You have seen me, you have seen the Father. In other words, you're seeing the express image of our Father who is in heaven as a human being. Hello, human being. Hello, human being you're looking at exactly who you're supposed to be like. In other words, when the Bible says don't compare yourself one to another, why? Because we're all going in that direction. Just because you're a little ahead of somebody else, don't brag. 
Are you with me? Because I got a little haughty for a while. Come on now. I studied the word harder than you. I showed up at every meeting harder than you. I served harder than you. I outran you. Amen? Because that's the way I am. If I'm going to do something, I'm all in. I'm going to be successful. When I, when I set out to make money, I said, I'm going to be a multimillionaire by the time I was 30 years old. I was a multimillionaire by the time I was 30 years old. If you don't have a goal, you're going nowhere. Amen. If you're just kind of flopping around, you'll never amount to anything. you got to have goals. So when I got into the kingdom of God and I looked around and I saw a bunch of lazy, you know, maybe I'll show up this week if, you know, if... if, if if my nails are dry, I'll show up to the Mishkan. You know, if it's not my birthday party or her birthday party or his this or the, 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 the maybe I'll show up. I didn't have time to read the Bible this week or pray. I'm busy with my job, you know. And I saw people, I'm like, man, I got no competition, baby. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave you in the dust. And I left you in the dust. But I wasn't competing against you. I was competing against a, 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 a roaring lion that walks about ready to devour you. I was up against Satan himself. You guys are no competition. Satan is competition because he will get in your face and he will try and stop you. And he's a murderer from the beginning. And he's big and he's old and he's smart. And he knows the word better than you do. That's when I hit the wall. And God said, you don't compare yourself to other people. He said, you compare yourself to me. Amen. And I said, okay, Lord. <laughs> that's, when, that's when my nose went up from the air and went like this. <laughs> yes, Lord, you're right. I want to be just like you. Amen. And I got a ways to go. I know you keep showing me and you keep taking me and you keep... Go, making me go through the same thing and I, and some things I'm so stubborn and some habits I just can't let go and I just it's so difficult to change can I change somebody else instead of myself can I take the beam out of can I take the speck out of my brother's eye and and let's not look at the beam in my eye can we can we can we work on some of these other sinners that are here no I want you to work on you and I'm taking you. Are you coming? I said, I'm coming. It hurts. Sometimes I don't understand why you did what you did. Sometimes I'm embarrassed. Sometimes I'm ashamed. Sometimes I, I, I feel like quitting. I said, but I got to keep going because I want you to deal with every area. I don't, I'm not, I don't want to leave any area untouched. You touch every area of my life that is not like your son, that is not like Yeshua. I mean, how many times have you prayed that? You deal with every area of my life that is not like Yeshua, that is not conformed to the image of your son. When was the last time you prayed that? Never. You're like, why did you do this? Why did you do that? Why did you allow this? Why did you? If we can be honest. But how many know when you go forward with God and you do what he tells you and you deal with yourself and you confess your sins to him, are you with me? If you confess your non-Christian or non-Messianic behavior, because that's what he's after. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from everything that is not like him. Yes or no? Amen. Somebody say, can you own up to your own shortcomings? Or you want to look at your brothers and sisters all the time? Can you own up to your own garbage? Because that's what he's after. He's looking to change you. He's looking to change me. Is the change for the better or for the worse? Will I be better off being more like him or less like him? Should I sin more or should I sin less? How many know the Bible says a little sin, a little leaven, does what? Deforms. Every bit of leaven that you allow in your life, that you hang on to, keeps you deformed. Every leaven you admit to and 
and hand to the Lord that he forgives you and he will cleanse you from all that righteousness, you're one step closer to glory and, the, and, the, and your predetermined destination. The more you cooperate, the quicker you'll get there. Somebody say, I'm in. And I'm in for the promise of God. And I'm in for his predetermined destination. And I want to be like him. He created me to be like that. Imagine, imagine, imagine. How did he create me? Who am I? Look at Yeshua. That's who you are. Look at him. That's the way I created you to be. Would you suffer in this world if you were more like him? Would you be as sick as you are if you were more like him? Would you be as depressed as you are if you were like him? If you were like him, would you live in this world much differently than you're living now? Would you be much less frustrated? Would you be much less fearful? Would you be much less uh, scared than you are today of the future of what's going on? Or would you live in this world as, as more than a conqueror, the Bible says? Where is God taking me to be more than a conqueror? To be this amazing person that God created us to be? Because how many people can agree Jesus was and is amazing? And God created us to be like who? Did he create me to be a loser, to be suicidal, to kill myself, to hurt other people? Did he create me to be this way, to be depressed, to be oppressed? Did he create me to be this way? Or did he, create, did he give me the power over all the power of the enemy to tread on scorpions and serpents and to tell me nothing by any means shall hurt you? And, and, and notwithstanding, rejoice not that the devils are subject unto you, but he says, but rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Yeah. Hello? Yeah. You want better promises than that? The people say, why is this a, a better covenant? Of course it's a better covenant. What's better, the promised land of Israel or the, or, or the God of Israel? I mean, I love the land of Israel. I love going there. It's beautiful. It's blessed. It's holy land. But I want to be like the Holy One of Israel. I want to be conformed to his image and his likeness. Amen. And I don't have to go to Israel to do this. It could be done right here in Sunrise. It could be done in Georgia. It could be done in Minnesota. It could be done in the Keys. This can be done anywhere. Because no, we no longer worship in temples built by hands. Now we worship in spirit and in truth. The hour has come and now is when the true worshiper shall worship in spirit and in truth. And now the Holy Spirit's in us and we are the temples of the Holy Spirit. And where's the Spirit taking me? What's my predetermined destination? To be conformed into the image of His Son. Is it going to take me 40 years to get there? Am I going to argue with God? Am I going to not believe God? Am I going to believe the naysayers? Am I going to believe those that try to discourage me? Or am I going to believe Him? Somebody say, I believe Him. And because we believe Him, the promised land is within reach. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Stand up and honor the Lord, please. Oh, my, oh, me, oh, my. You think we stepped on some religious toes there? Somebody say, time to step on some religious toes. Time to step on some naysayers. Time to step on some unbelievers that come in the name of Jesus. Oh, you'll never be like him. You'll never. Oh, the works of Jesus died with the apostles. You'll never hear God's voice. He doesn't speak anymore. Well, wait, didn't the Lord say, my sheep hear my voice? Somebody say, I want to be a sheep. And I want to hear from God. And I don't mind hearing every area of my life that is not like the Lord. I mean, can you pray that? Do you have the courage to do that? Somebody say, we have the courage to do that? That the Lord would deal with every area of your life that is not like Him? Is that, is, that, is that a good prayer? How many people are willing to pray that with me? Heavenly Father, 
we present ourselves to you as a living sacrifice. And we ask you, Father in heaven, that you deal with every area of my life that is not like Yeshua. Every area of my life, every thought, every motive, every plan. And Father in heaven, that your will would be done here on earth in my life. And Heavenly Father, we resist the devil and we submit ourselves to you. And we apologize, Father in heaven, for doubting you, for being angry with you, from not believing you, for questioning what you are doing in our lives. Yeah, the Holy Spirit's reminded many of us have questioned God. Somebody say, time to stop questioning. Don't question the king of righteousness. Don't question the perfect one. Don't question the holy one of Israel. Somebody say, I'm sorry, Lord, I've questioned you. I've doubted you. And we love you because you loved us first. And you showed your love by laying your life down for each and every one of us. And you call us your friends if we do whatsoever you command us. Father in heaven, thank you for commanding us to be like your son. Thank you, Father in heaven, for, for that commandment. And that we love one another as you have loved us. Father God, I apologize, we apologize when we have not loved each other the way you have loved us. And Heavenly Father, we don't want to spend 40 years like the nation of Israel, walking in a circle and not moving forward to the promises of God. Lord, forgive us for lagging behind. Lord, we wish to go on a straight line now. Not lean to the left, not lean to the right. Take us on a straight line, on a straight course, Lord, now, to our predetermined destination, to be conformed into the image of your Son, our Messiah, our Savior, our King, the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords. In his name we pray this morning. And the people of God said, amen, amen. Give the Lord a big hand. Shabbat shalom. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching on the internet. We're going to close in worship. <coughs> I was going to say the bedtime Shema, but that was last night. The ironic benediction.
Gabe dismisses us with the ironic benediction and just want to extend an invitation. Please stay, break bread with one another, encourage each other to love and, work and good works, exhort each other to love and good works while there's still time. We praise you, we thank you, Lord. I want to thank every single person that volunteers their time, their efforts, their finances. Thank you for your tithes, your love offerings, the work of your hands, the love in your heart, all of your prayers. Thank you so much. We, we certainly appreciate it. We do have prayer warriors here in the front. If you have a need, then please uh, feel free to avail yourself of the love in their hearts as they intercede for you, okay? In the meantime, I want to wish you uh, Shavuot Nehedar. Look forward to seeing those of you who are coming for, to be mikvah tomorrow. We look forward to seeing you. Please bring a towel so I don't have to wash all the laundry, okay? Thank you. <laughs> in the meantime, God bless you all. Shabbat Shalom. Shavuot Nehedar. Have a wonderful week. Thank you, honey. We're going to close what is known as the Aaronic Benediction, found in the book of Numbers, chapter 6, verses 24 through 26. First in Hebrew, then in English. <laughs> The Lord Yeshua bless you and keep you. The Lord Yeshua make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord Yeshua lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. B'Shem Yeshua, in the name of Yeshua, the Sar Shalom, the Prince of Peace. Amen, amen. Shabbat Shalom. Give the Lord a big hand. Thank you for being here. Thank you for watching on the internet. Please stay and break some bread. <laughs>